St. Luke's Chapel, thank you for being here today and for also tuning in. We pray for the repose of the souls of those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. Debbie Youngling.
St. Luke's Chapel. Those who are in chapel with us are certainly cordially invited to receive the sacraments at the time we do. Um, all people are very cordially invited. And those at home may want to grab a glass of juice or a glass of wine and a cracker or some bread and share the sacraments at the time we do. God's love is universal and he's with us wherever we are. Let us pray. God, we come to you in this hour of worship to give thanks for all that you have given us as we seek forgiveness for any wrongdoing that we may have done. We ask that you guide us, guard us, and protect us with your might as we offer ourselves to your service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Wonderful to see everybody here. Tomorrow night at 4.30, we'll be here again, so join us at that time. Um, we will have a bite to eat downstairs after church tonight, but tomorrow night, everyone has to get out of here to go to family commitments, and so we don't do that tomorrow night. But tomorrow night's service is absolutely gorgeous, so hopefully you can join us there. Um, we pray for the repose of the soul of uh, Debbie Youngling, who was an art teacher at Spencer Elementary School. Okay, and Spencer Van Natten, spoken from a Van Natten resident. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Please always correct me with that. I did my student teaching at Spencer Vanetton. 
That was 78 years ago, I think that was. A long time ago. Um, so I hope everyone's ready for Christmas. It's good to see so many here tonight. We've been blessed with good weather so far this winter. But I think those who want a white Christmas, it's going to be doubtful, I think. The joy of Christmas for me is all the mysteries that surround our faith. And a lot of people think those things happened just at that time, back 2,000 some years ago, that an angel of the Lord visited. The angel Gabriel came to Mary. St. Joseph had dreams that came to pass. The heavens brought a star. And earth came together. As I was doing my writing for today and for Christmas morning, I was talking about the birth of Jesus, which we talk about tonight in our gospel reading. And the whole thing of faith with the birth of Jesus is that God came to us in human form and showed us through a young man who lived 33 years, how to be decent people, how to live among others. And I'm not sure as I look at the world today if we learned our lesson. But yet we can learn our lesson within ourselves. We can be a decent person and follow the teachings of Christ. We don't have to say, I'm saved. We can show that in our actions because actions speak louder than words. Today I was at the grocery store and a a woman in obvious distress come around the corner and banged into my cart and was ready to blame me for being in her way. And I smiled at her and I says, Merry Christmas. And she got a smile and immediately changed. I wished somebody this morning happy holidays. We don't say happy holidays, we say Merry Christmas. And that's what this holiday is about. Jesus coming to earth, becoming a human being, or God coming to earth through Jesus, and becoming a human being, and showing us how to live peaceful, joyful lives. And somehow through creation and through the years, We've been influenced sometimes in wrong directions. We've been influenced in a way that might take us away from the teachings of Christ. But God is among us. Emmanuel, God among us. And all we have to do to know our Father in heaven is to look at the world around us. I don't know how many other youngsters beside myself would watch the birds and try to figure out how they would fly. And I guess I'm lucky I never tried. I would have had a broken leg, I'm sure. 
but just in that population, that species on earth alone. How do the swallows know what day they're supposed to return to Capistrano? I can't remember what I had for breakfast. And yet, the God within them, the instinct within them perpetuates their species. The monarch butterfly. All the world listens to the miracles of God. And on Christmas, we, re we really listen to the miracle of God in the birth of Jesus. I was thinking this morning that tomorrow evening, people go to Mass, people go to church, and the human being, the human population, is probably at more peace than it will ever be. Simply because they feel the presence of God through the birth of Christ within themselves. And that's what Jesus is about. We don't have to verbalize. We have to take action. We can be kind. We can smile and say Merry Christmas when someone has a head-on collision in the supermarket. We don't have to, if somebody's going 70 miles an hour down the highway, we don't have to pass them just so we can be ahead of them and go 10 miles faster. We should enjoy the present. This week I had a very dear friend who's been a friend for 60 some years find out that she had uh, liver cancer and it's all through her liver and she had a blood clot in her leg and of course everybody hears the word cancer and they think that it's the end and I said to her you know a lot of people are going to die before you do that don't expect it and you aren't dead yet, so enjoy each day. And at Christmas, we miss those that have gone before us. It leaves an empty space in our hearts at the holiday. But would they want us to be mournful and ruin the holiday? with those that still are with us, that surround us with their love. They would want us to remember them with joyful memories in their hearts. They would want us to remember the fun things they did, the gifts they gave us. But most of all, we would want to remember the gift of love that they gave us. And when we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate the gift of love that God gave us, which is the greatest gift of all. And if you're mournful about people that have gone before you, fill your hearts not only with those memories, but know that you gave them God's greatest gift, the gift of love. We all have regrets. We all have things that we didn't say that we thought we should have, things that we didn't do because we didn't do them and we should have. But would our loved ones say to us, well, I'm mad at you 
because you didn't do this. No. They would embrace you and wish you a Merry Christmas. Let that love of Christ born at Christmas that drew the attention of the entire world at that time. And not only the birth, but the star in the sky. The natural beauty that God put in the sky. So as you celebrate tomorrow and Monday, look at the world around you. and know that it's created out of love. And it's created in such a unique way of the seasons complementing each other, the plants, the animals working together, instinct becoming their survival knowledge. Think of that and say to yourself, that couldn't just happen. There had to be some divine inspiration behind that. No matter how humans try with science, theology, we will never ever prove the mysteries of life and especially the mysteries of the birth of Christ. It's not to happen. Because it's those mysteries that hold our faith dear to our hearts. It's those mysteries that we celebrate. It's those mysteries that intrigue us to keep going. If you don't like someone at the dinner table on Christmas, smile and say Merry Christmas. Try not to clench your teeth. But let God's love permeate through you into the room. And you may discover once again the gift that God intended for us on that Christmas Eve so long ago. Amen. Let us stand and say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. The alms basin and basket is in the back of the church. If you want to make a donation on the way out, um, please do so. I will keep St. Luke's going, and we do appreciate that. Thank you. Our offer for our hymn is number 107, we'll do verses 1, 2, and 3.
ask your blessing upon this bread and this wine that it may become for us, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as we ask God's blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves to receive the sacrament of this Holy Communion as we pray for all of Christ's church and the world. You may sit or kneel. God, we come before your altar this day asking for forgiveness for any sins or offenses that we have done against you, our God, against your creation, against our neighbors or against ourselves. We ask forgiveness for these, our sins. We give thanks for all that you have given us, for our family and for our friends for our church and our parish family, for our community, the state, the nation, and the world in which we live. Help us to preserve your creation for the generations yet to come, that they too may be partakers of your kingdom here on earth as in heaven. We pray for all people who cannot be with us, especially for the sick and the suffering, and for all people for whom our prayers are now desired. We pray especially for the war-torn areas of the world, that within their hearts they may know your peace, that they may know your love, and that they can overcome the terrible things that are happening to them and their families. We pray for all the sick and the suffering pray especially for your servant Donna. And we trust your faith that you will touch all people with your healing power. We pray this day for all those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. We pray especially for Debbie Youngling. And we trust your faith that you will open your arms in love and mercy and have received them into your heavenly kingdom. Be with their families and friends as they mourn their loss, that their empty hearts may be filled with the consolation of your love and the joyful memories they have shared throughout the years. And now, together, let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We seek forgiveness for these our sins, and are heartily sorry for these our wrongdoings. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sins, so that we may return to your path and walk in your ways all our days. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. In chapel, let us nod peace to one another. At home, embrace those you love with your peace. Peace to everyone.
He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Take and eat this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he shared it among his friends, and he said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood, the new and everlasting covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord, we present ourselves, our souls and bodies in reasonable hope to life everlasting, trusting through our faith and our love of you that you shall always be with us, that we can never be alone. Strengthen us with your good spirit that we may come to know your love for us, following the example that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us all to pray.
Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ. in remembrance that Christ died for you. Be done in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.